Fred Chenet, thank you so much for being on Blockchain Rock. We really appreciate it. It is an honor, you know. Uh, we're a great fan of Atari, not only of, you know, uh, Atari as a pioneer in the interactive entertainment space, but also Atari as a pioneer in the, you know, blockchain and uh, crypto asset space. Uh, I think the company has, you know, taken very bold move uh, under your lead. And uh, we're going to explore some of these right now. So thank you so much. Uh, Welcome. And- Thanks for having me. Thank you. So um, I'd like to start, you know, Atari, as we, as we just said, pioneered the interactive entertainment space uh, in the, you know, within the design of video games. But uh, lately, you've really been taking bold steps. You came out with the Atari uh, video computer system. You came out with the Atari tokens. Your involvement in the non-fungible token space has been remarkable. And uh, also within the hospitality space with the Atari hotels, can you explain to us a little bit why? Yeah, this- sure. If mm-hmm. we, we do simple things, we have, you know, the games, that's the DNA of the company, right? Uh, software, um, any platform, mobile and internet, we, we are less in, on consoles these years, but that's software, Atari games. Then we have hardware, which is one product, essentially, which is the new video computer system. So it's a computer. It's in the name. It's a computer. Uh, The idea is to go with a mini computer, which is uh, very, very cheap, very good, very, very good uh, ratio in terms of quality and price. Because you have basically a computer with eight gig of memory for roughly less than $400, including joystick and uh, controller. So Atari. VCS, the hardware, software, hardware, and then everything else, and I, except for the token, everything else is really brand licensing. Uh, the hotels, we're not going to invest in any hotel in the world. We're just licensing the brand. We have <clears throat> like toys that we're making with partners. So we go with very selected businesses and we try just to, to do what is right with the brand. But it's again, software again with games, hardware with the VCS, and then brand licensing. Now blockchain, blockchain is really across the board, so we say, because I'm a strong believer in, in blockchain. I think that this is here to stay and this is going to be basically all over the place uh, in the way we run the, the businesses, the way we run even our daily lives, uh, banking, personal finance. So it's really across the board and um, our goal on the block, in the blockchain space is really to create the Atari ecosystem. I mean, we'll, we'll dig into that, I'm sure here. Uh, but blockchain by itself is really across the board. So this is, the, uh, this is why it's going to, to be everywhere. So as a first question, I'm interested, you know, you mentioned that the VCS system is a computer rather than maybe an entertainment system or a console. Uh, was there a particular reason why you decided to go with the computer system, also AMD? Um, yeah, it's very good, and as you said, in terms of power to cost ratio, I know it's very. It's also very good for streaming. Have you developed that machine with you know also broadcasting and streaming in mind, or is there any particular reason? Let's say. Yeah, I think uh, mm-hmm. we wanted you know the two reasons. The very first reason is that we wanted to have an open system, not a closed system, um, so that people could you know keep building on it because I think the brand really means, the Atari brand really means um, entertainment, technology, and basically evolution. I don't want to say revolution, but uh, evolution. So this is what the brand means. If you're really interested in entertainment technology and doing, creating something new, uh, I think Atari is the brand and we support all these initiatives. Um, So for us, it was super important to be uh, offering a, an open system and not a closed one. So you can keep building, you can get, add your memory, you can install any operating system you want. Uh, so that's really the, the reason of the heart of, uh, you know, the, the initiative here. And second, in any case, you know, when you look at the amount of money that has been put in, in the closed systems by the competitors, I didn't have the money to afford that. So, but again, the, the most important thing is really that At the core, um, we wanted to create an operating system that was open to everyone. So that's Mm -hmm. really why we 
way. Uh, we, we came up with this MIDI computer. And do you envisage a sort of Apple Store space where you can support developers to promote, you know, optimize games for that uh, system? Or yes. is that something so that you have in the pipeline? Computer, and inside mm -hmm. the computer, you have a basically a place, a store, an, an environment, but it's kind of like a console, which mm -hmm. we do curate ourselves and which would be here just to just like any store. And I think at the end of the day, um, you have today two companies that are controlling the phone systems, right? Uh, the, the interactive experience on the phones. I don't think that so today there's really a company that is, has been offering something for the living rooms, uh, something easy to use in the living rooms, because personally I'm tired of, you know, going arrow down, arrow up, arrow left. Arrow, so, you know. <laughs> yes. I know there's, there is that, you know, <laughs> companion app, which we also have, but I think not being able to have the computer in the living room, I think is a problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just trying to create something and offer something that hopefully will fill the void. I see. And moving on, on to, you know, the non-fungible tokens and like the application of blockchain within the interactive entertainment space. I think personally, what I'm really excited about is, you know, as a player, um, we end up investing a lot of efforts in terms of, you know, time and money. And the problem is when you decide maybe to change game or move on with your life or you're left with nothing, although maybe you do have value that could someone else could be interested in. So is that part of why you decided to go with the NTF? I know that uh, Atari recently joined the um, engine, correct? Yes. Uh, with the NFTs and plugged into that ecosystem, which allows player to trade effectively between games, in-game items, if I'm not mistaken. Could, could you yeah. expand? Could you tell us a bit more about it? Yeah, yeah sure. The, <clears throat> I mean, the goal is to create an Atari ecosystem on the blockchain. So what, is, what does it mean? It's uh, basically an environment where we don't run a charity. So it right. is an environment where we can make money using our brands. So the Atari brand and all the games using our software, the games, in creating experiences, interactive entertainment experiences on the blockchain. So that's the Atari ecosystem. To do that's our goal. To do that, we have on the one end we have tools. So we have just been approved for the Atari wallet. Uh, today is uh, December 29. So it should be really, it's already released. We're going to announce it after the holidays. Um, we are working on our exchange. We have the Atari token. So these are tools that do contribute to, our, uh, to the ecosystem. And then we have the experiences, games and more applications. But the main point is NFTs being one of them, right? The main point is this. First, we don't know what's gonna work. So we like NFTs and we know that, you know, the NFTs that we are doing today will be all different and will be well, different from the ones of yesterday. And the, the upcoming NFTs will be more sophisticated. So this is just one example. We have a casinos uh, that we are testing right now. I think there's, there's going to be a video released uh, tomorrow. Um, we are working on, on other types of games. So the NFT is only one part of the interactive experience. And we're working with uh, a couple of, uh, we've, we've announced a couple of initiatives on the website. So that's one thing, uh, which is the NFTs are part of a global offer that we are just, you know, building and offering. And why NFTs? It's just because, you know, we're kind of humble. And we don't know what's going to work, right? So the point for us is we know that there's something in the NFTs. Let's do it. It's fun. Uh, if people like it, great. We're going to learn. We're going to do more, more stuff after that. But uh, we are working on other types of games, like Casino, as, as I've said. Um, so I think it's just, you know, it's just like when you start building uh, some experiences, uh, you, you, know, you never know what's going to work. <laughs> so this and is... Uh, this you know, before, oh, before joining, you know, I mean, before returning to Atari or before joining Atari, I believe you worked at Lazar, right? Which is an investment yeah. banking. So you have a very strong background within the financial services sector. So uh, do you think that has contributed to your interest, you know, in merging the interactive entertainment space with what is now deemed more, as you said, blockchain is a bit of a like, it's all embracing and all encompassing, but it has started, you know, within the financial services uh, space. So <clears throat> has that played a role? And also uh, as a question that I have, I'm very interested in the use of tokens to uh, fragmentalize 
um, you know, to have a fragmented approach to asset investment. So, for example, I think in the case of Atari, you know, because of how strong the IP is, uh, have you ever thought of implementing blockchain to, you know, fragmentalize uh, the ownership of some of this IP and allow people to invest in Atari as an alternative form to, you know, just investing in share? For example, owning a small part, you know, of a title that you own. Is that something that you're considering or it's something that... <clears throat> yeah, it's true that blockchain started, uh, especially Bitcoin and all of that, they have a very strong financial component. So that's kind of natural to me. Um, I think that, you know, with these new businesses, it's more important to, to be kind of nimble and know where to find the, the resources and basically carefully uh, invested the uh, other people's money because at the end of the day, it's also the money of all the investors. So yes, it, I think it helps a lot to come from a, an investment background. Now, uh, regarding you know the ownership on the blockchain, we are all looking at the same thing, which is on the one hand, um, ownership of IPs, intellectual property rights. So you already have some systems out there. I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, everyone also, especially, uh, you know, with the, the rise of DeFi, maybe right now the fall, I, I mean, I was just really yeah. <laughs> before this, uh, this interview, this, this chat, just, you know, the, the latest news on some projects. I think, mean, you know, there's, a, especially on the blockchain, there's a, I believe there's an opportunity to basically offer, but you need to have like the proper licenses. Uh, because it's super regulated. Yes. Uh, yeah. But I think this, there's a way to offer the opportunity to, to some people. I don't want to say everyone because I think it should be limited to qualified investors. Uh, but with the blockchain, I think there's an opportunity to offer to some people the, the possibility to invest in some new games. It's like super high risk business. Trust me, I've done that for 20 years. Uh, you can just bet one and you can lose everything or you can just bet one and make x times uh, your money yeah it's like super super risky so you just have to be ready to lose mm -hmm. uh but this is why it has to be regulated um but i think with the blockchain is very interesting because you know you can have you collect the money from apple google wherever you put that in a in a in a, in a regular bank account but this regular i mean this kind of regular bank account is basically uh programmable iban programmable account and you can just basically distribute the money right away to uh, some token holders. So I think, you know, no more calculations, you're entitled to X 0.00, whatever the percentage uh, yeah. of the revenue. And I think it's very interesting. So you'll see more and more of that. You'll see a lot of losses. You'll see some um, very interesting projects and profits. Um, at the end of the day, and try, again, trust me on this, uh, it's a portfolio effect. Um, if you just look at the winners, it's impossible to only have winners. Just <laughs> no, for sure, for sure. I, I understand. Yeah, sure. And yeah, of course, it would be an investment firm. So I, I just think, you know, and I, of course, I'm like you, I'm enthusiastic about the technology. But at the same time, I'm also wary of the fact that, you know, it's not just the solution to everything. It is a technology with its pros and cons. And I think deployed in the right manner for the right case, uh, use cases, then it can be very beneficial. In terms of investment firm and, you know, fragmentalizing investment, I see the benefit in terms of, you know, tracking ownership for KYC and AML concerns, Indeed. you know, to automate those those type of uh, thing. I, I'm just, I'd be very excited, you know, to be able to own a, a small piece of the Mona Lisa, you know? I mean, I'm not talking about the Mona Lisa in itself, but uh, Basquiat, for example, or other art. Yeah, or, I, think, I, I think there's gonna be that. You're gonna see, you, you mm -hmm. need a lot of, uh, you know, protections, but you will see a lot of, uh, um, you know, I don't wanna say, even for houses, right? You can think of, you know, just buying a token that gives you the, the, the ownership yes. of the house. I know there's been some, uh, some projects on that. Um, I would say, I'm not sure that this is going to happen especially for the houses, like basically you buy the token, you own the house. But what I can tell you is that um, if you look at the, you know, what, what is called the cadastre or the, 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 the public zoning of uh, each and every city, uh, I, I see no reason why it shouldn't be on the blockchain. So basically you go to an artery, you buy, but then you move something on the blockchain and this is uh, the best way to make sure that there's no conflict. Um, yeah, that's done in, yeah, in real time. So I think there's gonna be some evolutions there. Mm -hmm. um and i would see some very interesting um, opportunities indeed. yeah for the title you wouldn't have to I, I mean easier to stay 
Yeah, no, for sure. And I, I think also like with the houses, as you said, a lot of problems that uh, property lawyers have, not really problem, but that's a, a big part of their work is to check the register, make sure that the house is not already been, you know, charged against, even registering charges, you know, for mortgages. I think that would be very interesting. Um, Fred, I'm wary of your time. Uh, of I don't the fact think, that you, have... look, uh, you know, we could speak for <laughs> hours. I think it's, if I may say, I think it's, you know, it's just the beginning, right? I mean, it's been, uh, yes, some years, but I think it's just the beginning. Um, and I believe that, you know, if you look, look, look at what was up, look at the big companies before the crisis of 2008 and nine, right? It was seven, eight, nine, whatever. Look, look at the companies today, uh, the big ones, the top 10, they are just not the same, okay? If you project yourself in the, let's say 10 years down the road by 20, 30, 35, 10, 15 years, I think you're gonna see in the top 10 companies in the world, uh, basically all these companies will run on the blockchain and will be blockchain based. And that's the next evolution. That's at least the bet I'm making. And I'm, I hope I'll be there in 10, 15 years to check that. But again, look at uh, you know the big cycles every ten years. Look at the top ten companies in two thousand and five. Look at the top ten companies today. Uh, this is just uh, amazing the progress that has been made. And I'm not saying oh tech is great, tech is going to solve everything because we know that there are some limitations. Uh, but you just can't ignore right what's going on. So it's um, if you ignore it, you are really left on the side of the road, and that's a big, big, big problem right now. Mm -hmm. um, you have a lot of people who just didn't catch up or took the, the train. Um, and they have, a, I think there's really like a two, I mean, different lanes. You have the fast speed lane and you have like a slow speed lane. So that's really a problem. Um, and it's not only a question of tech, it's really a question of, you know, how to make sure that no one is left aside. So, but again, in the next 10 years, you'll see a different top 10 in the companies. And I'm pretty sure, I'm happy to take a bet, but uh, most of them will be blockchain based. And I, just before we leave, I have a very quick question. What do you think about augmented reality? Is that also technology you're excited about or you think that it's more down the road, it's less, it has less of the potential? I don't see, I don't see the business, especially virtual reality. So I know it's slightly different, but um, yeah. virtual reality, I think the problem with virtual reality is that it's still a very solo experience. Mm -hmm. um, and frankly, after five, 10 minutes, I'm just like, Maybe that's the age. I don't know, but I think it's the same with everybody. You just can't bear more than 10 minutes of this uh, because you feel the dizziness. So um, it's interesting. I think it's more like for fun, for five, five minutes, 10 minutes, the one moment. Um, but I don't see, I don't, I don't see that as a, I don't know how, except when you sell the machine, I don't know how you charge. So yeah. uh, for software, so. It's for, for me, it's difficult, but that's maybe because we don't have the IPs as well. We don't have the games. We don't have the, and also we, I mean, not have, you know, the willingness to do it, to do something, to invest big in the, in that field. I don't see, I don't see the opportunity for us, maybe for other people, but not for us for the moment. Fair enough. Fred, thank you so much for your time. So we really appreciate you. you coming. Thanks for the opportunity. Happy thank you very much. Bye-bye. Have a good day.